you looked each other in the eyes on your wedding day as you hoped for a good future. Your hearts warmed up in anticipation of what you were going to create and build together. The children you were going to have, the places you were going to go, and all the good stuff. However, as time passed by, life didn't seem as you had planned. The quarrels, the arguments, you know, fights even. Sometimes if you went that far. And all the things you never thought could happen in your marriage. What do you do when marriage seems difficult? What do you do? You wonder, how did this happen? How did I get myself here? What happened to that person I loved so much? Where have they gone to? Why is this happening? All the questions you have. So many questions, but where are the answers? What do you do? Best thing, never take your marriage issues to friends. I'm sure we all know this. I've been married for 21 years now, and I've known this from day one. You don't discuss your marital issues, your husband's or your wife's um, faults with your friends. What happens when you settle your issues? You become ashamed because you have exposed the one you love to strangers. When marriage gets tough, you want to discuss all his or her faults with everyone who can listen. Yes, it is understandable. You want to tell your children how or how bad sometimes some people go that far oh he did this oh she did that don't involve your children that's the wrong thing to do the marriage was an agreement between you and your spouse not between you and the children cover up for one another seek counseling there are counselors out there for a reason marital counselors Go for counseling, go for therapy if if required. Alright? How if you don't if this if steps are not taken, this damage can last a lifetime. People have been affected mentally, psychologically, because of issues that have occurred in their marriages. Mistakes do happen. We need to have the grace to forgive. Grace to forgive when things do not go as we planned. When you, when it seems like your spouse is not behaving the way you expected. Also, your expectations. What are you placing all your expectations on your spouse? You expect them to make you happy. Your happiness is depends on you. Take charge of what makes you happy. Do things you enjoy. Do things you love to do. And then you come together as whole people, not as half, waiting for the other to make you whole. That is what happens in marriages. People begin to say mean words to the other person. Avoid that. Because the marriage is tough now, Avoid mean words to your spouse because they go deep and can cut, you know, hurt the heart. And you may not be able to get that love back. If you get the love back, it takes a lot of work to get that trust back again. So it's best to avoid saying those mean words to your spouse. There's a temptation to take your phone and text them immediately after a disagreement you text text all the <laughs> bad feelings how you feel and how evil or how bad they've been to you resist that temptation okay now the other temptation is to walk out the door don't walk out the door 
all right find a space where you can be on your own if possible away from the person who has hurt you and just take your time to reevaluate things to think things through all right however in cases where there's domestic violence that's a different thing separation might be best well this talk is about disagreements when things are just difficult without any kind of violence all right this talk is not about um being finding yourself in a dangerous situation that's quite different now the other thing to avoid that most people or some people can find themselves in is to confide in the opposite sex you know the opposite gender you find somebody who you feel and listens to you who you feel oh oh she's she understands me better maybe somebody at work oh my wife doesn't understand me oh look at this lady she listens she smiles my wife doesn't smile she doesn't listen or my husband oh i found somebody at work who listens to me oh he's so nice he's so kind he gives you all the sweet words and everything my husband doesn't do that no don't find somebody who you feel comforts you in the opposite gender that is very dangerous it's a dangerous place to be so it must be avoided at all times because the temptation to that's where the enemy attacks the most and the temptation to you know find somebody who listens to you who you think is what you need might come in it's best to avoid it what do you do when marriage gets difficult this is what this talk is about Ephesians 5:26 says husbands make your wives holy cleanse her by the washing with water through the word what does that mean this gives you men a big responsibility how do you do that it means you as a man you have to be um deeply rooted in god's word you need to understand what the word of god says okay it says to sanctify what does it mean to sanctify your wife you need to set her apart make her holy set her set her apart as holy godly husbands show love to their wives they help their wives grow spiritually to help your wife grow spiritually you need to be spiritually sound yourself dig into god's word understand what god's word requires of you what does god require of you as a man there's a saying as you lay your bed so you lie on it as you nurture your home so it will be for you women are like incubators what you put in her she will multiply and give it back to you are you loving her she will multiply that hundredfold even more and give it back to you are you telling her mean words it grows in her and she will multiply that and give that back to you okay whatever you sow in your wife as you lay your bed so you will lie on it women are big incubators are you surprised that they are the ones chosen to carry children they carry children for 9 months these children grow in that womb that's the makeup of a woman her entire being is to make things grow is to produce and reproduce and give you what you've put in her so men i urge you it's up to you really how you want your home to be it's up to you this is my opinion you might have a different opinion that's why the bible says the wife is the helpmate once you know what you are doing you are growing in the word she helps you you make sure your home is peaceful that's what she has been created to do she is your helpmate you need to carry her along okay you need to grow spiritually yourself pray with your wife any home where this is done it becomes impossible to say mean words to that person you are nurturing that person you are loving that person you are saying good things to you will not use the same mouth to say bad things to that woman 
okay the man as a husband you need to be personally committed to serious study of the bible your faith has to be up there and then you can nurture your wife and then you can make her grow you can sanctify her okay because you are doing godly things this is why it is said that you must not be unequally yoked if you are unequally yoked to somebody who doesn't share your faith it becomes difficult for the husband to do these things to the wife or for the wife to reciprocate reciprocate because you are working with different faiths you're not as one so the mutual discipline has to be there men disciple your wives it is important nurture your wives okay yeah so i thought i woke up this morning and i was inspired to write this so i thought it'd be nice to share and let us know when marriage gets difficult it's not the time to throw in the towel it's not the time to say look i don't feel the way i once felt maybe it's time to walk out the door i'm here to say maybe you are learning how to really love this person reach out to each other okay remember god loved us even when we were out of touch with him maybe marriage is a way of god showing us how to love those who seem to be out of touch with us okay so we see that god loves us even when we are not in touch with him so when it seems marriage gets difficult and we are out of touch with each other we need to go to God and ask for grace, grace to love again, grace to see what he sees and not what you see. And with time, that grace to see what God sees would come again and the spark would grow again. Okay? God loves us even in our imperfection. We need to see that our spouses are not perfect and love them even with their imperfections we are not perfect and they need to love us with our imperfections as well all right yes so that's what i thought to share with us today i hope this has blessed you in some way i will be coming up to share on marriage again some other topics and i hope you enjoyed do stay tuned and share with your friends. Thank you. Take care. God bless. Bye.